Okay, so we have a sporting goods store that's having a sale on clothing. Each type of jersey has a different discount. Why? Because that's confusing. Stores don't do that. One jersey is $50 with 40% off, and one another jersey is $45 with 20% off. The boys want to know which jersey is the least expensive. How can you use how can they use percents to figure it out? Seeing some headphones. So that's what I wanted you guys to use our dry erases for. The first jersey they talked about was $50 before the discount. It's not really clear in the way that problem is worded. And this one is 20% off. The second jersey is $45. I'm sorry, this one's 40% off. This pen is really smelly. And this one's 20% off. Just looking at those, which do you think is going to be the least expensive? The $50 and the 40%. Are these two prices at the beginning too far off? $5 is not that big of a difference, right? 40% and 20%? There, that's a pretty big difference. Have you guys ever been taught how to find 10%? If we can find 10%, we can always find the other percents. What do you know? Pretty much. You basically just move the decimal that's here to here, and what's left is your 10%. So $5 is going to be 10% of this. How would I then find 40%? Multiply by 4. Multiply by 4. So the discount here is going to be 5 times 4, which is 20. That's the discount. Then we have to subtract it to get the price, which is going to be $30. Let's do the same thing with this. Let's find 10%. It's four dollars and fifty cents times two because we have twenty percent, which would be what's four point five times two? Nine and forty five minus nine. It's going to be thirty six. When we first looked at it, we figured that the first jersey would be the better deal, but have we proven it now? Okay, there's another way to find it. Cross multiplication. What we're comparing is the whole part to the whole. And the part of a sale price is going to be the sale price. The whole is what it was to begin with. So for the first one, we're going to put the $50 down here. And on the right side, we're going to write a percent ratio. The discount is 40%. So if I set it up like that, this is what we don't know. Well, we do because we figured it out already. It should be 30. But we're going to put our variable there because we're trying to find out what the discount is. And the discount is going to tell us it's $20. If I cross multiply 40 times 50, go ahead, that's what you have your calculators for. We multiply across. So this equation is going to be 40 times 50 is equal to 100 times x. What did you get when you multiplied 40 times 50? Where's your calculators? I know you can do it in your head, but I want you to calculate it because we're going to divide in a second by 100. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So we have 2,000 is equal to 100x. To find out what x is, which is our discount, we're going to divide both sides by 100. But in your calculator, that just means 2,000 divided by 100, which is going to give us 20. The hard part with that is people forget to do the next step, which is to subtract it from the original. 
They think they found the answer. Do you see how people could stop there? Can I show you a better way? Let's go back up to our cross multiplication and we're going to reset this up. Why did I put the 50 down here? It's the whole price, yes? Why is 100 down here? When we're dealing with a percent, that's the whole, right? The discount is 40%. How much are you going to pay then? Say it louder. 60%. If, you, if the discount is 40%, you're going to end up paying 60%. So we can set this up with the 60 here. And now it's not going to be the discount. It's going to give us how much we're paying. This is going to give us the sale price. We cross multiply 60 times 50. 3,000 is equal to 100x. 3,000 divided by 100 is going to give us 30, which is what we got when we did the 10% times 4, right? I want you guys to do this method for the other problem, the $45 20% off. See if you can find it the same way. If it's 20% off, how much are you going to pay? What's the other part of 100 from 20? 80. 